The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host who comes to you almost every day at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have today? Well, it certainly looked, uh, as we talked on the show yesterday, that we were going to get a fairly significant bounce. I thought that the uh, low was in for the year yesterday. And uh, yeah, where are we at right here? If I can actually find it. Okay, uh, up 22, we'll call it 23 points. As I said, I'm not expecting us to rally 500 S&P points before the end of the year. I just think that for the most part, we're going to see maybe a percent or two higher. Uh, but what we're really going to see moving are the stocks that have been most hatedly uh, shorted uh, and not gone down, um, especially over the last few days. Um you can make a case that on Friday, on uh, Thanksgiving, there was nobody that wanted to be a bear coming into a Monday. Uh, because there were no bears, they ran the market down fairly good. There wasn't a lot of people to instantly uh, cover. They finally got it down there to a level, level where everybody um, started shorting, thinking the end was nigh. And, of course, the market pops instantly, which has been kind of the – uh, modus operandi of the market the entire year. Uh, we went from 10% uh, put call ratio uh, in the VIX stocks. Those are the out of the money puts and calls from Friday uh, to what was it, 55 or something yesterday? 50. So um, it popped back all in one, or well, two days, let's put it that way. So generally, when everybody decides it's time to short, uh, it's actually time to go long. Um, we've talked about not knowing whether it's a bunch of stupid people that all decide to go short at one time, uh, or uh, a lot of people shorting uh, the market just before the turn, trying to push the market down and run and flush out all the uh, the stops before they turn around and then cover all those and send the market much higher. But it looked, uh, I don't know, we were down, what, 30, probably 35 points yesterday. Uh, by the uh, uh, by, the time the, yeah, the show, I'm probably about halfway through the show. Uh, what do we close down? 20 points yesterday. We're up uh, 23 points now. So basically, where we were at uh, when we started uh, Monday night. And um, like I said, I'm not expecting a huge amount of index uh, moves, but I do suspect uh, that there are a lot of stocks. Uh, that are probably going to go uh, significantly higher before the end of the year, uh, just as volume continues to decay, as it always does this time of year, and shorts end up slowly covering. Uh, and uh, to a great extent, December seems to almost always be uh, one of these deals where it's the proverbial uh, frog in the uh, water. You throw uh, a frog in, a, in the hot pan of water, it'll jump out because it senses it's getting burned. But uh, guess what? You put that uh, frog in a nice uh, tepid water and turn the heat up slowly, uh, it just uh, eventually gets baked. And that's generally what happens on short sales. They're looking for some kind of giant thing that happens. It's just so infrequently that we get anything that it even matters. Now, Looking forward to next week, uh, the 10th and the 11th are the FOMC meetings. My guess is that they're not going to say anything to spoil Christmas, uh, but uh, we do not know what a handful of people will do. But my guess is uh, they won't change a great deal. market will kind of like that. That will probably take us 
uh, a little higher to sideways through the 11th, and then probably uh, that's where I think the majority of the short squeeze is going to come from about the 11th uh, through and eh, probably the 20th, maybe the 23rd uh, as we get into Christmas. So it's, you know, there's there's always the question of what's more important, the charts or seasonality. And in Christmas, I've got to say that most of the time you'll have some outliers, but almost always for Christmas, the the bias uh, of a little higher, not monstrously higher. What I'm trying to say is you're probably not going to go rich or get rich um, going along the indexes. They'll probably be up a little. I'm going to say probably an 80% chance of being up a little and a 20% chance of being down a little. So, you know, if it'd be different if there was a 20% chance that it was down a whole lot, but you just really so seldomly get that over um, a couple of hundred years of history that you want to stay, I think, away on that. And again, uh, there's some stocks we bought one yesterday that has 17 days or 16 days to cover. Um, as that volume continues to drop, we're just going to see this thing go up a couple pennies, a couple pennies, a couple pennies. And of course, on this one, which is only in the, it's a little under uh, 10 bucks, it only has to go up uh, about a buck 50. Uh, to really make some decent profits out of it. So, um, like I said, it's going to be kind of tough. Uh, we've got some other questions we want to get here to today. Um, you can always email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, but let's do a little history, and then when we come back from the break, uh, we'll talk about the uh, first question that I had uh, earlier in the day, and we'll cover a, a specific stock. But uh, let's do that history. Um, I guess we can do it now. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And on this day in 1952, heavy smog begins to cover over London, England. And on December 4th, 1952, it persists for five days, leading to the deaths of uh, 4,000 people. It was a Tuesday afternoon or Thursday afternoon when high pressure air mass stalled over the Thames River Valley. When cold air arrived suddenly from the west, the air over the London became trapped in place. The problem was exasperated by low temperatures, which caused residents to burn even more coal in their furnaces. And uh, most people don't know that England is basically a giant piece of coal. You dig a little bit farther underneath the, the turf. And probably 80% of the people heated their homes with uh, with uh, coal uh, into the into the probably into the 70s, uh, before they a lot of these uh, older homes were demolished. They started uh, rebuilding new homes that um, were a little bit more uh, robust and modern. Uh, so that's kind of changed, but uh, kind of interesting to think of uh, London as kind of a L.A. with huge amounts of uh, pollution. Uh, but then you think about uh, China, no real different there. You go to you go to the uh, capital cities of China, you can't breathe there either. Every people are doing that, burning coal. You well, know, you don't do that much anymore. China still does. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we had a uh, question um, earlier, so I had a, a, at least a minute to get ready for it. Uh, it's about Newtonix. Um, and actually, I've got a chart up here, too, so we can take a look at it. Uh, NTNX is the company. And they were kind of wondering how all this worked with uh, uh, VMware and all the rest. And I knew that there were going to be a lot of people that probably needed a little primer before they figured out how this company actually makes money. Uh, it's had a nice run uh, of about 100% off the August 16th low. Uh, now, of course, that was coming off of uh, almost 55 bucks back in February, uh, down to 17 bucks. So you can make a case that this thing has uh, done just a, a dead cat bounce, uh, but it is a very interesting company nonetheless. Uh, so uh, we'll do a deep dive on what this is, and maybe you'll learn a little bit more about technology and technology companies. Again, you don't have to be uh, someone that can go to work there tomorrow. You just need kind of a 30,000-foot overview to know how these things plug together. And uh, yeah, a little knowledge of a company is probably better than a whole lot of knowledge on the company. At least you'll understand what they do. Uh, Newtonix is uh, a company... Uh, that pushes what they call a hyper-converged infrastructure. And before we get too deep in this, the just about everything in computers and technology uh, is fairly complicated. So the idea is to always try to abstract all the uh, dirty little details uh, farther down in the code. And a lot of times what you'll do is you'll write one program that talks to another program that talks to another program. In fact, all the Ethernet and Internet, um, as it comes through your uh, and into your system and the way you're listening to me now, goes through seven different layers of a software. And if something needs a change, you can change it anywhere uh, in that. But the idea is to generally let the first layer Kind of leave it alone if it's working, you know, 
don't mess with it. Then you get kind of a second uh, layer of abstraction, a third layer of abstraction, a fourth layer, fifth layer, sixth layer, seventh layer in Internet. And that's worked for pretty much the same since the mid-'80s. And the idea behind cloud computing uh, with new techs is kind of that. Uh, They're going to allow you to control uh, cloud servers and servers in your own location rather seamlessly by putting a lot of different layers above everything that you need to use. So, you know, the traditional three-tiered architecture is uh, some servers over here, uh, a ton of storage over there from somebody in the storage business, and then networks from somebody like Citrix and and, uh, Cisco and those folks. And, of course, in the olden days, what you'd have is a bunch of uh, different techs trying to make all this stuff plug together and work. And, of course, if you wanted to change it, Uh, God forbid, because everything had to be changed on all of them. Uh, VMware was one of the first companies to change the way that routers worked by putting a layer of software that basically took all care of everything based on rules that you put in. So you didn't really have to worry about, you know, specific IP addresses and typing this number in here and that setting over there. It just knew how to do it. It's kind of like uh, you're the boss and you've got a bunch of people uh, underneath you that are managers. And then they got people that are underneath them that are actually the worker bees. The man- the uh, king cheese tells the managers what to do in all the different parts of the businesses. They go and then they tell all the people that work for them what to do underneath. But the CEO doesn't have to talk uh, to the uh, serfs down at the ground level that are actually doing all the work. So there, it's that those layers of uh, abstraction, which are no real difference uh, than the business model. So the idea uh, from Nutanix is that you could basically write a piece of software that would do all that layers below everything that you needed to do uh, to run a big cloud service. So let's say that you're somebody that's running an ad on the Super Bowl, and you're going to need a ton of servers to handle uh, everybody uh, attacking uh, your, uh, hopefully, uh, clicking on your ad after the Super Bowl. You may need a ton of servers, but you may only need those servers for six or seven or eight hours, um, probably a little less for the next few days, as people maybe look at it in the next couple of days. By Wednesday, they probably have forgotten about your ad. Uh, and uh, probably if they haven't clicked on it by then, they're probably not going to go to it. So what you need is a bunch of servers right now, and then you need to diminish those over the next few days. Now, maybe you're going to bet everything on Amazon? Eh, Maybe not. Bet everything on Google? Eh, Maybe not. Everything on Microsoft's Azure web services? Maybe not. What if you could... Uh, control all three of them from one piece of software uh, and just say, okay, I want all these servers. This is the software I want on them, uh, and I'm going to copy everything to them, and they're all going to talk back to this uh, um, one computer where I'm going to you know, store all the information for the people that came and what they wanted and whether they gave me an order or they wanted more information or needed to download stuff. So the idea behind Nutanix is kind of the same thing as VMware, where VMware really kind of targeted just being able to control um, uh, routers, uh, like Cisco routers, uh, but not really have to worry about what's what the hardware really was. They, they Again, you've got all these levels of... Uh, uh, and layers of what happens. And as you get down the tiers, um, more of those levels have to know more about the hardware they're talking about. But at the high levels, eh, the CEO doesn't really know the names of the people that work for them down in the trenches. So this company, at least their idea, is that you'd be able to turn on uh, let's say a thousand servers and maybe you're gonna split them equally between Amazon Uh, Microsoft and um, Google. So if one of them is down on Super Bowl Day, you didn't throw all your money away on one of them, 
right? You're going to be able to load share between all of them. They're all going to talk to each other. So you could almost say it's a cloud of clouds, right? It's kind of a cloud thing that actually controls all the cloud stuff below it. And again, you're basically talking about servers, storage, and networks. And the idea of abstracting those uh, at a very high level uh, and being able to, to control all of the major servers, uh, companies like those big ones from Amazon, um, Google, and Microsoft, but at the same time, include maybe your own servers where you may have stuff that you don't want outside of your office, uh, like credit card numbers, that kind of stuff. Maybe you'll just save all that stuff uh, behind a giant fence with spikes on it uh, at your location. But Nutanix, kind of a uh, software that drives and uh, oversees the rest of cloud services. We'll be back after this. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back at a couple of questions more. Um, Abstraction is kind of the easiest way to say this is uh, you jump in a car, uh, you turn the car on, you put it in gear. Uh, you press down on the pedal. You don't know if someone didn't tell you or you didn't look whether that when you press on the pedal, it actually goes to a computer and then that computer actually pulls uh, on the throttle for the engine. You don't know if that 
engine's a six cylinder, an eight cylinder. You really, it's just under the hood. It's hidden up underneath there. But you know, when you push down on the accelerator, the car is going to go faster. The more you push down, the faster it goes. You don't need to know all the details of the engine underneath it or uh, the transmission that's hooked to it or the, all the other systems that come by it. You've got the interface, which is that pedal or that gear level or the steering wheel. And once you understand those three things, those are the only things you generally, unless things hit, uh, hit a big uh, speed bump or a pothole, those are the only things you really need to know, and brake, brake lever, I guess. So you've got your interfaces. Everything else is hidden under the hood. And that's absolutely what everybody wants to do. If you write software correctly, you can abstract people from all the details uh, that are underneath there and they're of course, they're dark and dirty and greasy under that hood. You don't want to get under there too much, right? You want to do basic maintenance every once in a while. But you don't want the uh, driver always having to think about, well, did I have a six-cylinder, an eight-cylinder? You know, what transmission do I have? And for a long time, that's the way that a lot of these cloud systems work. You had to know everything about it. And the whole idea is virtualization i.e., you don't know anything about where uh, the computer is, where this stuff is running on. You just know if the, you do it to this spec, that it'll run on everything everywhere if you do it right. If, you, if it runs one place, it, it should run everywhere. And that's basically what these companies are all working on, is that there's going to be an interface uh, for the customer uh, that may need a 1,000... Web servers are all for for uh, Super Bowl night, and that's it. They hit a button, they click up to a thousand. Um, they maybe click a button that says scale uh, uh, as you know as best as you can for all the deluge of people that are going to come in on the Super Bowl ad. And you know maybe you start off with a uh, hundred servers, you go to a thousand servers. Everybody's forgotten about it by the time they go to bed. You maybe only need 100 servers now. These things will all kind of automatically uh, expand and contract as needed. Uh, and uh, that's what all this stuff does. So it's, uh, like I said, for the most part, if you're a big company and you're in retail, you're not really in the business of owning computers or having a bunch. You may just run this big ad and need the ability to scale uh, from very small to very large and maybe all that in the space of a single week. Uh, that is what this all this virtualization companies do, including VMware, is make it kind of invisible and under the hood so you don't have to spend a lot of time figuring out how this plugs into that, uh, where that is. Everybody's had a computer, always had to hook in all the cables, and uh, set their IP addresses in the past. You don't do that anymore. It just knows. It just knows. Anyway, uh, what else do we have out here uh, to, to, to question about Amazon? Uh, I just don't see a lot going on here. Um, all these companies are under fire, including Google. We'll talk about them next. Um, not surprised this thing didn't drive higher. Uh, as we all know that these guys are going to be uh, under the uh, – under the microscope for the coming year. Uh, we also saw that in the last earnings cycle that they talked about spending a lot more money. And of course, Wall Street never likes the fact that Amazon's spending more money. The overarching issue that I think uh, is uh, that we've talked about for a while uh, is after Intel uh, earnings, they let us know uh, that at least for the server business, uh, which Amazon really, when you look at it, they sell a lot of stuff. They have a lot of businesses. But the overarching business that makes uh, the most amount of money and most amount of profit uh, is their Amazon Web Services. So when we look at something like Amazon or Microsoft, um, we know for a variety of sources that the growth in Web Services is slowing. So I'm not going to, since Amazon really isn't uh, what you would call a reseller of software, um, 
like Microsoft has cloud services and software sales for databases, that kind of stuff. Amazon really doesn't. And so you want to look to a company's uh, big cash cow, which is almost always the margins they have. Uh, the retail side of Amazon, you know, so they make six, eight, nine percent on the retail products. Uh, their web services, I think, most of those companies are making like 50 percent margins on web services. So as that business slows, don't be surprised that why everybody points to Amazon is where they get their packages from. Uh, the real money is in that web services business. Uh, same thing with Microsoft. Uh, about half of their profits, uh, recent profits, have been uh, directly linked to their Azure web services platform. They still do well, uh, but I'm not surprised that these companies, I'm not saying that they're going to sell off wildly but I'm gonna say that their growth curve uh, is specifically lower. And I think one of the reasons that we saw uh, the news today uh, on Google, uh, on the original founders uh, leaving uh, from the board of directors uh, is that they've kind of seen the writing on the wall that the easy money is over. And of course, uh, the next year, they don't wanna be involved in being dragged in front of uh, a lot of uh, congressmen who probably call it the Google instead of just Google. Remember those guys? I think, who was it that called everything the Twitter and the Google and the, you had to put a, a the before everything, which was kind of a little creepy. Mm, I think a lot of people think it's creepy uh, to put a the, kind of like the Goldman Sachs, which I think if you work there, you have to actually do that. I don't know why they would call it the Goldman Sachs, other than Goldman Sachs is fine. Anyway, uh, Google up a little bit uh, on the day uh, that the uh, that the two original founders uh, are leaving. Uh, but the question is, why are they leaving? Uh, is this really a positive for Google? And I'm going to say that the CEO isn't that sharp. He's not that good. Uh, I don't know if they were doing anything or nothing. Uh, but there's a lot of CEOs that are nothing more than caretakers. Uh, this guy is not that good. He lets the employees tell him what the company can do and what they can't. Everybody's running around on strike, walking out. I don't know how you run a company based on what your employees want to do. You kind of have to run the company on what you can do. And again, I think these guys are going to get burned a bit when, uh, Congress talks about uh, why were you willing to help the Chinese communists, but you refused to help the U.S. military? It, very tough questions coming from uh, Congress next year for the Google. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And what else do we have here? Yeah, just checking out uh, what's going on. Uh, and uh, yes, we did not discuss a volume for the day yet. Um, volume was good yesterday, but not enough to signal any kind of blow off uh, to the bottom, which is making me think that we've got at least probably the rest of the month to go higher. Question is whether or not we get anything that catalyzes a better year next year. We're doing about 4.3 billion shares today. So we're going to be in line with the volume we went down on yesterday. Um, so eh, no clear signal out here that any kind of bottom is broken. Uh, I don't think uh, even if we retest uh, the recent lows the last couple of days that we're going to break them. In fact, I think like I said, uh, I think the 80% chance uh, that we're a percent or two higher uh, in the uh, S&Ps come uh, Christmas, maybe even a little bit more than that. Uh, but the index is probably not going to tell the story. The uh, story is going to be as volume drops, uh, short uh, positions that are highly shorted are probably going to go a little higher. Uh, had a question, uh, and as always, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, Tamar from Seattle asked me about a company uh, that handles taxes for city and state governments. Uh, what's the, the uh, name of the company? And that's a little um, wrong for what you're talking about. They handle sales tax information for state, local, uh, and federal, and international uh and com uh, countries all across the globe, and that's Avalara. So think of it as a cloud service where you say, hey, I'm shipping uh, product A uh, from uh, uh, Taiwan to, uh, you know, uh, Arizona. What are the taxes? Who gets the money? All that kind of stuff. These guys are always plugging in the tax rates and uh, the the legality of selling something from one place to another and where you have to collect taxes and where you have to send them. And, of course, uh, you just tell them what you've done uh, or what you're doing, and then they'll tell you how much you have to pay. And you can either you know put that in uh, your uh, uh, sales prospectus uh, to the client. But you see a lot of things like Amazon, where it'll always say your uh, expected taxes or so and so. And of course, by the time they ship it, it's generally, if you're in the United States, correct. But sometimes it's off depending on where it shipped from and who was the uh, company that actually sold it. Some things you buy from Amazon, um, even though you're using them, they're just collecting the money. So it's actually, you know, the company may be in the same state as you, so they have to collect local sales tax. Sometimes they do not. Uh, all those kind of intricacies of from point A to point B, uh, but uh, they don't, uh, They, I, I just 
your description is a little bit different. They're, from what my understanding is, they handle uh, all the information of what taxes you should collect as a business when you do business with someone else and you're shipping that product or giving that product or delivering that product to some other jurisdiction, including company, uh, countries all around the globe. So that's it, Avalara. Of course, um, they got to 94.31, down to 64.20. Uh, and had a bounce, but I think uh, that every time uh, the discussion is that there's going to be some kind of better trade deal, that this was going to be less needed. If the trade deal falls apart, I think this thing goes back to 95 bucks. Uh, but then you always have to worry about, you know, someone saying the trade deal's back, and eventually it will be. But I've never thought that this thing was going to be settled before midsummer of 20. Uh, 20 going into the election, and I think it gets solved then. Um, I think the Chinese would be wise to handle it sooner rather than later, because uh, what happens, uh, the longer it goes, the more people will be looking for products outside the jurisdiction of China. Uh, AAPL had a uh, interesting call from uh, one of the a uh, Wall Street analyst uh, who they say have done a big survey uh, and found out that people that have bought Apple for the last, uh, for iPhones for the last uh, eight, 10 years or so are now starting to wander and look at other phones in the Android complex. Um, it's not huge at the moment. I think the guy's going to be on CNBC tomorrow, but the, uh, it generally, uh, you want to get excommunicated, say something uh, that isn't positive about Apple and the investment community, and you're going to get torched. Um, a lot of the dip yesterday was kind of uh, on that. You're getting back a little bit today, but not a lot of volume. Uh, as we said, Apple really hasn't been doing very well uh, in the iPhone business over the last year. Well, the difference has been that they're selling those ear pods to everybody and making outrageous amounts of margin on them. And the question is, are people now looking for more cost uh, uh, value uh, comparisons? I'm not a big guy that would spend a lot of money on a phone. Uh, in fact, I'm probably the cheapest uh, smartphone buyer in the world because I've got Lots and lots of computing power with big screens. Why do I want to dink around with a little screen? If I was outside, uh, maybe at customer sites all day and needed connectivity, maybe that would be okay. I just don't need a phone other than really to talk to people that much. Uh, the question is whether a lot of people are going to start looking at uh, spending a grand every year or two on Apple for phones and say, well, you know, I really just don't do that stuff anymore. I've grown up. I use it to talk and text, and that's about it. And I think uh, when you get into a mature business and people quit paying games, um, that may be it. Anyway, um, interesting discussion that people that have owned iPhones for a number of years are starting to look at others, including Samsung flagship style phones and others, just thinking that they don't use it enough for all those other things. I remember in the 80s, everybody was supposed to uh, have a word processor and a spreadsheet uh, and uh, email uh, for business. And they thought everybody should have it at home. Um, and Microsoft was kind of pushing that. But how many people you know that actually even know how to run a spreadsheet that aren't in business now? I know a lot of people down here, if I ask them to even name what the spreadsheet was, they probably couldn't come up with it down in Florida. Now, maybe that's a thing where there's just a lot of older people in Florida, but it continues to be kind of one of these things where I think the dinky little games that go on handheld devices uh, and kids, especially kids that have pushed this for the last five or 10 years, they eventually just kind of get over it. I think Twitter has been one of those kind of companies uh, where it becomes uh, TWTR. Uh, Twitter becomes less and less important uh, every day. Uh, talking about another CEO wanting to, to vamoose, 
Uh, he's going to try to hide out in Africa all next year. And if anybody believes that's just because he wants to do something in Africa, it is not. Uh, he's hiding from the congressional uh, guys that will be on his rear end all next year. And, uh, and he's going to be saying, you know, I'm down there doing the Lord's work in Africa. I can't come back and talk to you. Anyway, everybody's running for the uh, running for the hills. Google. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during our trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And the first question I have, do I have anything more on uh, Newtonics? And uh, yeah, I sent you a, a PDF if anybody else wants it. Uh, but here's their uh, babble about what they do um, from Newtonics. So if you want to take a look at this, um, it basically breaks down what the company does and how they do it. I'll be glad to send it to you. Just uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. But uh, um, not real technical. And like they said, for dummies on here that I'm showing on the screen. But uh, certainly you can take a look at it. Uh, what else do we have uh, to, to, oh, question about Tesla being a three gap play. You've got two, you're literally looking for the third one. Uh, again, I'm not a big fan of trying to short uh, stocks into the end of the year. Um, we had in fact, probably the best seven days in the newsletter uh, last year when we bought, um, was it the day before Christmas or day after? 
whatever we did, whatever it did, we ripped um, uh, in equities. And, of course, we had a good run starting in August all the way through uh, pretty much the beginning of October in, in uh, options. Um, options, very tough. Uh, again, the market tends to move slowly and deliberately into Christmas. You don't generally get everything in one big bounce. So uh, I'm continuing to watch this market go uh, probably a little higher each day, a little bit more of a short squeeze into the last couple of days before Christmas. I don't see anything that really moves anything. FOMC's next week. That's pretty much it for the year, unless they uh, drop the chalupa, which I do not think they're going to do. I think that uh, it just continues to ratchet up uh, the problem with shorts. Uh, if you're thinking about going short, maybe next year, maybe January 3rd is a better idea. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll be back tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.